Hey guys, how are you? So, I had a recent experience where, if you've been following my vlogs, about three months ago, four months ago, I forget now, I lose track of time, I bought a $10,000 professional cinema camera for Canon, a C200. Well, it's 7500 US, 10,000 Canadian, and I uh, add in the fancy lens, and the mic, etc., etc. Boom, 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 bang, bang. It adds up to like uh, 12, 13,000 uh, Canadian, 14,000 or so Canadian with the tax. Um, and I have my, what I'm filming on now, my Canon 80D, which I've had. So with the cinema camera, I was forced to, because it's got all these fancy controls and, you know, tremendous capabilities, to really dig deep into camera fundamentals, whether it be DSLR, video, still camera, it has video capabilities, or the professional video camera. Now, this experience with this device has reminded me of something... I talk about all the time. And what do I talk about all the time? I say that at the end of the day, when it comes to all this programming and software development, et cetera, any skill, business, the fundamentals, the basics are what separates the pros from the not so pros. It's really that. And it's consistent across all disciplines. So I'm talking about programming, I'm talking about business, I'm talking about jujitsu or boxing, any martial art, and which I've been reminded painfully, same thing with video work. So I bought this thing. This is my kick-ass cinema camera. Here it is, a little picture. Uh, that's it. 7500 about well, US dollars, 850 Mike was about a thousand bucks. Adds up. And if you look at the videos, the last 50 videos, I've been filming mostly the cinema camera, sometimes this camera, mostly a cinema camera. And you see that the results are inconsistent. Sometimes the picture looks amazing. Sometimes I look a little, a little too crispy, a little too overexposed. Sometimes too underexposed, meaning the picture's a little dark, undetailed. Sometimes I got like a blue sheen. Sometimes it looks like uh, I'm about to get sick. My face is green or blue. And that's just all signs of me not knowing exactly how to use that camera properly. So what's the larger point? The larger point is that though I have this beautiful cinema camera, it costs 10000 Canadian dollars, 7500 US dollars, I was still screwing up the quality of the video. So though I had this amazing tool, I still wasn't producing great results. Why? Because I was still learning how to use the bloody tool. I didn't know my foundations very well. But this is what I'm discovering. I was forced to learn my foundation. If you invest that kind of money, so I better put some time into learning this stuff. So I put some time. And now I understand the fundamentals of photography and cinematography much better. I understand how to use white balance now. I understand about exposure much better, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so the results you're going to see, the last four or five videos are much nicer now, much more consistent. You're never going to see the blue and the green. I'm never going to look like uh, I've been cooked in the oven for two hours, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm also seeing that now with DSLR, this ADD. I understand these fundamentals better, so I'm able to produce much better results even with this very inexpensive camera. So why do I mention all this? Same thing with programming, by the way. I can tell you from over 20 years experience as a software developer, writing commercial code going back to the 90s, it's not the language really that makes your apps great. It's not the language, it's not the framework, it's you. Whether or not you're a good developer. You can produce excellent apps and there have been excellent web apps and websites produced in languages that are now considered crappy and out of date. And guess what? A lot of these apps still exist today and they do very well. So keep that in mind. When you're in coder's pain, programmer's pain, where you're trying to decide which, uh, which programming language you are going to pick to learn, don't 
get too hung up on that because you can always switch from one language to the next because once you know your foundation, once you know your core, to learn new languages is pretty easy. New frameworks, pretty easy. So don't get caught up on that. And number two, understand that what's going to make your apps great is not that you pick the perfect language. What's going to make the apps great is whether you write good code. That's it. That's it. I can pull out some moth... I'll take the, some old language out of the mothballs, you know, an old framework, and I can tell you I could produce an app that does pretty well. I could produce a website that does pretty well. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you should look to the old stuff. The new stuff will just speed up the process in certain areas. Not always. You've got to be careful. But they will allow certain types of work to be easier. So, for instance, uh, in the uh, web stack, I'll use that because that's what I'm most familiar with, you have all these frameworks. PHP has Symfony and Laravel and CodeIgniter, although these days I would be losing Laravel. Python has Django and Flask. Java has, um, they still use struts apparently, but Spring is the most popular one. Uh, JavaScript, you got Node.js, of course, on the server side, etc., etc., etc. Now, the whole point of these frameworks, and these libraries sometimes, React, JS is a library, is that they just really speed up the process. It allows you to do things much more quickly. And that's why you use a framework. That's why you use libraries. So when I was actively writing Java, when Java was my langage de choix, I I sort of speak French, given I'm from Quebec. Um, It's my choice language at one point. It was, Java was. I had developed my own MVC framework from scratch because it just made me much more productive. These days, most of the time, I would not be writing my own frameworks. There's so many great frameworks out there, it would be kind of crazy to do it. So there you have it. I hope this lesson uh, sinks in. And the lesson is, knowing your fundamentals is more important than anything else. Don't get into coder's pain or programmer's pain trying to figure out what language you should learn or what framework and it's not like I'm going to learn the wrong language and all my apps will be terrible it doesn't work that way you learn to program well you write simple modular code as I teach etc etc doesn't matter what language you do you're going to produce good good software that's it for now oh here's a tip here's a tip if you want to have people smile at you when you're going to the coffee shop your uh, whatever, just pub- random public, you want to smile, or you can get like this, you can get th- th- this thing here. This works wonders. I, I, I had this, I bought this a couple of years back because I used to wear a shirt like this back in college. And uh, so I bought this pin, I put it on my lapel, and I've uh, it's it's pretty good. Mickey does the smiling for you. All right, that's it for now. Bye bye.